tutorial on this. An explosion birthday pop-up card. Here's the card in action. It has a little magnetic closure and then you open it and then bam, a big explosion on the sides of a cool happy birthday pop-up. So for the card itself, I started with a six by 12 strip of metallic brown cardstock and I scored it five inches for folding and then I folded it over and then I just made three really close together folds. I didn't even measure, I just kind of went a little bit further on my scoring board. And that way I can make a closure for this card that has a little thickness to it. And then for the interior card where I'll build my pop-up, I went with a four and a half inch wide by 10 inch long piece of cream colored cardstock and just made a center fold. You can use any pattern paper for the explosion sides. I will say that if you can find something that's thinner, that's nice because it doesn't get as bulky when you fold it up. The size you'll need for the explosion pieces is you're gonna need two pieces that are each six inches wide by 10 inches long. Both of the explosion sides will fold exactly the same way. You start by just folding the piece in half. And uh, if you only have single-sided paper like I do, then just go pretty to pretty. So the pretty's on the inside of the piece. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the fold side, so not the open side, but the fold side, and you're going to fold that diagonally down, just lining it up with the other side and giving it a good crease. And you may notice I'm using my brayer, or you could use a bone folder, just anything to really work that crease. Now let's turn that crease around and learn in the other direction. And again, I'll take my brayer to it. Now I'm gonna open that up. Here comes my little origami fold. What I need to do is I need to bring that little kind of mountain into the piece. So I do that as I close it and then it'll collapse that little triangle right down into the piece. If you happen to have a cutting mat that has a nice grid on it, this will save you a little bit of measuring. You can just line up the side of the piece with one of the lines and what you're looking to do is have that first fold be two inches from that side. So see I'm just going out there measuring two inches and just eyeing it and I've got that straight line to kind of help me and then of course the line across the bottom. And I'm going to fold that triangle end over and give that a good squish. Then I'm looking to go one inch. So see now I just went one inch over and I'm going to fold that over and it's several layers, so I'll just take my time and try and get it as straight as I can, but it's not really crucial that it be, you know, all that perfect. Then I'm, once again, going to go to the end, so I'm doing one inch again. So one inch, just right there to that little six inch mark, and give that a good squish. And then that final triangle, I just split it. In other words, I just bring the tip of the triangle over to the end. So it might be a little bit less than an inch, but that's fine. And there, see what you've done is you just kind of accordion folded the, that outer part of the triangle in. Now we've got to learn that fold in the other direction. So we're just gonna, on each one of those folds, we're gonna back fold them the other way. So I just flipped the whole piece over. Now I'm learning each one of those folds in both ways. It'll just make it easier to collapse all those little mountains inside the piece. Now unfold everything. And you can see all those creases that you've made. Now you already did that first little mountain. And so then on each side, what you're looking to do is just make sort of back and forth little mountains. So I've got a little, valley fold that I need to get in to the next crease, see, and that'll kind of bring that next fold up as a mountain, and then you can kind of pinch it and work it in, and then do the next one the same way. So if you've got a mountain there, then I need a valley, but then I need another mountain, and you see how it's just kind of collapsing in on itself, and then you should be able to collapse that whole side of the piece down, and it'll lay flat. Perfect. Now I'm going to just repeat that exact same process on the other side. So I get to my first fold and I know that I'm looking for a valley, but the next one's going to be a mountain. So I kind of pinch it and work it. Then the next one should be a valley, but the one after that will be a mountain. And so you kind of got to work two folds at once, but then you can kind of collapse it in on itself. And there it is. It all folds up and becomes this perfect little bellowing little fan piece, little explosion piece. And now I'm going to repeat that process again. So in your case, you're just going to back this video up and watch it again. Okay, for the ends of my little pieces, I thought it'd be fun to kind of cut a decorative edge. I'm using the outdoor edges for this. It only works in barely because I have very thin paper. And it won't even cut all the way through that stack even on my thin paper. So you can see when it comes off there, it's cut down enough that I can then just kind of take my scissors and finish it out. If you are not using very thin paper, just skip the step with the die cutting and just use a very sharp pair of scissors to do this if you want to have kind of a decorative edge on the end. 
And then you'll see what happens when you fan it out. You've kind of got that fun little edge on the ends. Since I had the thin paper, I can do that then on my next one as well. Start with the outdoor edges and then finish it up with scissors. And there's my second one, all those pretty little edges. I get a lot of emails about my favorite glue bottle. It is a fine line, 20 gauge bottle. You buy it empty, you fill it with whatever glue you want. I like to use either the Line Coat Neutral pH Adhesive or Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. I do need to make sure that I hold that blue cap while I unscrew just the top cap and remove it, and then that little needle will come out of the bigger needle. And then all I'm gonna do is just add adhesive all over the flat side of one side of my explosion piece, and it doesn't really matter which side, just need to get adhesive on it and then line up the fold in the fold of the card and then the edge along the edge. And you can kind of see where the triangle cutout is there at the bottom. So that's how you determine which side you should be on. So for proper placement, I want to make sure that right there along the fold, I've got that little short piece in the fold and I've got the triangle towards the outside and I've got the one side lined up with the edge of the card. And then you'll see that after I attach it to the other side, it will open up when the card is opened. Now I'm going to switch over and do that same process on the other side with the other piece, just adding my glue all over that one side and then just lining it up with the fold of the card. The triangle is towards the outside and the edge is along the edge of the card. Once I like the placement and I make sure everything is nice and straight, then I can just reinforce that connection with a little brayer. And now I've got my two explosion pieces inside the card. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add glue now all over the backside of both pieces. And then I will just close the card against that adhesive and that will attach the other side in exactly the right position. So what's cool about this is you don't really see the explosion pieces. Then when you open it, of course, they expand and go outside the limits of the card. And there's still a nice big area in between them that we can fill with a pop-up. I'm going to use number 947, the happy birthday pop-up, and I'm using the alignment nubs and lining it up right over the fold of that cream card that I cut at the beginning of the tutorial. And then I'll just go ahead and use some temporary removable tape to just hold that in place while I roll it through the machine to cut the pop-up. What's cool about the happy birthday die is it's just kind of everything you need to make that birthday card. It's going to look real spectacular inside the card. Even if you just use the pop-up itself and the pieces that come with it for decorating, it's, you know, very intricate looking when it gets all folded up. Okay, after removing the confetti, the first thing you want to do with any pop-up die is you want to find the center fold in both directions. So the card remembers that way, but I bet it doesn't know that way yet. So just learn that center fold in both directions. Then you'll see that that little box will start to come forward as you start to close the card. And what you want to do is get that crease at the bottom of the box worked. And then you want to get your fingers behind the top crease and get that pinched into the card. So now you see the pop-up coming forward. Where does it turn down? Right at the top of the H and the top of that little star. So if you want to give those a little mountain pinch, you can do that. And then the next and last fold is actually at the bottom of the stars. Okay, that one can be just a little tricky to kind of find the right finger positioning to get in there. Sometimes I just take my index finger kind of behind the rows of stars and then try and just work that so that it's a little valley crease in there. Sometimes the die is going to want to fold at the top of the stars, but like I tell my students, you are the boss of the secret sauce, so you just make sure that it's folding at the bottom of the stars, and then you'll be able to get everything folded down flat and then just give everything a really good crease in the folded position and then you're going to have this fantastic little pop-up. The happy birthday pop-up die comes with the script word happy and the script word birthday as well and a great way to make those easy to adhere would be to use the Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive on the back of the cardstock before die cutting and then after you die cut it's just going to be a sticker that you can apply to the pop-up. The pop-up die itself is the shadow layer for that script happy and that script birthday. So basically you just make sure that you have an equal amount of the cardstock showing around it and then you'll get that perfect little shadow on the pop-up around the script word. So I've done the happy then and then I'm just going to turn around and do the same exact thing with birthday. And just make sure that you have an equal amount of cardstock showing all the way around the word and it'll fit on there just perfectly. And like I said, it's a great little pop-up die because it gives you such an elaborate look for very little effort. 
And it also comes with all the little star dies, and so you can use those to embellish those little pop-up stars as I'm doing here. And if you've mashed your pop-up down a little bit during decorating, no big deal. Just get in there with your fingers and retrain it. It'll retrain itself quite easily. It's going to remember all of those folds. Since I used those outdoor edges on the edges of my explosion parts, I thought it might be nice just to do the same on the edge of this card. Since it's kind of thick now, since I've already got it decorated, I'm just going to roll through enough to cut the edge and then back out again. And that way I don't have to roll all those layers through the machine, just enough to get the edge cut. So that just added that fun wavy edge to the top and the bottom of the pop-up card. It's time to add the adhesive all over the flat parts of the back of the pop-up card to put it inside the card. But one thing I want to do is I want to stop short of the fold on the side. See how I just stopped the tape short? That's because there's an area down there that I actually need to cut away to make it fit around the explosion parts. So other than that, I can use my tape or tape runner or whatever I'm using all over the flat parts of the back of the card. And it really doesn't matter whether you start you know, with the happy birthday side or with the flat floor side, it really doesn't matter. Actually, even before I peel that up, I think I'll turn it over and add my tape on the other side. And once again, I'm just going to start and right along the edge of the pop-up, but I'm not going to go all the way down to the fold on the sides. And I, I did already tie a piece of ribbon around the bottom of the card in the floor area. I just thought it would look nice in the finished card to have a little ribbon bow inside, and it was going to be much easier for me to put that around the pop-up card and then glue it inside the card, then it would be to kind of tuck the ends under. Okay, now I have my adhesive on both sides. It, like I said, it doesn't really matter which one I start with, but I guess I'll just start with the back wall. And I'm just going to peel up all of the liner on that tape so that that is sticky. Now I cut my card four and a half inches wide, but I probably only have about a four inch opening in between those two innermost triangles. So I need to flatten those back out again for when I add this to the card so that I can get down into the fold with the pop-up. So you can see it's actually overlapping those triangles just a little bit, but that's fine. That's only a temporary thing and there isn't any adhesive on the pop-up card in those areas anyway. So I just want to make sure that I have my fold in the fold and then I just press that back wall down really well. You can see there how I've got it installed. Now here's where I'm saying I'm going to cut that area away so that I can avoid my little pop-up bellowing parts, I guess you would say, on the explosion card. And so I just want to make sure that I stay outside of that little diagonal fold line. And I can see I'm actually a little bit close to it. I probably would like to take a, even a little bit more of that cardstock away just so it doesn't impede the explosion part from opening. So it doesn't really matter. I could cut it all the way off if I wanted to. I only needed those little sections to line it up in the fold. So once it's lined up and stuck down, it doesn't really matter if I cut those away. So I cut far away from that little diagonal fold, I won't have to worry about it. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to go in and cut kind of at an angle, matching but maybe a little bit away from that little diagonal fold that I can see below it. Once I have that done, then I can go ahead and peel up the liner on the other side. Now one thing about attaching this to the other side is I really don't want my explosion parts collapsing down into the card because they might get into that adhesive. So just let the explosion parts just stay out to the outside like big giant wings for this part and then just fold the card close so that it will attach the pop-up correctly. And then after that it's just a matter of retraining the accordions and mainly it's that first little mountain in the middle. If you can get that little mountain, that little triangle that comes into the card and get that one as a mountain Everything else tends to kind of find itself, but if you need to, you can work those little folds, get everything accordion folded again, and then you can see that it will collapse down. Now I have that rather large fold over flap left at the bottom, and that's actually large enough that I can score it kind of in the middle of the flap, add some strong adhesive, trap a magnet in it, or maybe two, depends on how thick the cardstock is, and then just fold that flap over so that the magnet is now trapped in between those two layers. Then what I do is I add another magnet with the adhesive on the top and just let it stick to the magnet below, close the flap up, and because the adhesive is on the top of the magnet, if I give it a good press, it'll transfer the magnet into the other side in the right position. And I just made sure that on my front design I added a piece of pattern paper that would cover the magnet. Anything you add to those explosion pieces is also going to pop up. So I've used the Props 2 die set to make some birthday hats, and just peppered them kind of around the explosion pieces. I strung a piece of twine from one side to the other, hung a couple more birthday hats, cut the ears off of the balloon, put it on with a pop dot against the back wall. 
This technique is going to be easily translatable to any of the other general pop-up designs. That would be the Lucy label, the Lorna label, the Lots of Pops, the Garden Bench. You can go to ecraftdesigns.com to see the Happy Birthday die or any of those other dies I mentioned. If you are a Facebook user, I'd love it if you'd like my Facebook page, Karen Berniston Designer, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.